everybody, um, and welcome to the, the third episode of the Coffee and Craft Podcast. My name is Bernadette. Um, I'm coming to you from my craft room, um, which is located in Vancouver, BC. Um, and I'm now um, coming to you with better sound quality, because I was gifted a new microphone for Christmas. So yay! Hopefully it's easier to understand me, and I can sync everything up, and everything is, is good to go. Um, I do have my, my coffee today in my Cheshire Cat mug, which I love. Um, uh-huh. Hope everyone had a good Christmas and has a good beverage. I actually have fun coffee today, which is what I wanted to grab. Normally I just drink whatever's on sale, but I was a gifted coffee for Christmas and I got this um, 49th Parallel holiday stuff, which is pretty good. Um, I always find my palette isn't def- find enough to like pick up these like notes it's like has notes of watermelon cherry and pastry tastes like coffee (laughs) um it's good though um 49th parallel are our local local roasters they have a big coffee shop down on fourth that has lucky's donuts which is pretty tasty anyhow so there's that um i am um working without show notes today. So hopefully hopefully everything is reasonably consistent and at least fun to watch. Um, it was either make show notes or make sure I got this filmed because I'm running out of daylight and I wanted to make sure I got this out to you guys. So we're just gonna fly by the seat of our pants a bit. Um, I guess before we jump into too many things, um, I'll just start with what I'm wearing. Um, this guy is a modified version of the Leslie Pullover um, by Hannah Fettig, which um, you've probably seen on my social media at some point. Um, I have, I cropped the sleeves, um, changed the gauge, and knit it out of a, um, this is like a Mad Tosh MCN. I've also cropped the bottom of it. Um, You can also see, hopefully, a bit of my fun skirt, um, which I don't know if you can actually, you can see bits and pieces. So this is a skirt that I sewed out of an old bed sheet um, that I'm kicking around. So it feels slightly like I'm still in bed, which is great for a Saturday afternoon. Um, yeah, so that's that's all that stuff. Um, trying to think about the best order to do this in. Because I have a couple of foes, but I don't have them here because the last time I talked to you guys was before was before Christmas. So a couple of the foes have gone off as Christmas gifts and I don't have them here anymore. Um, So I guess we can run through those a bit. Um, I crocheted up a bunch of dishcloths for my mother-in-law, which I showed you some of them of. Um, Hopefully I'll be putting in pictures (laughs) of the ones that are completed. Um, I think I managed to crochet like one one other one before I had to gift them to her. Um, I'll have all the patterns linked well, I'll at least have them all listed down in the doobly-doo with the rest of the show notes, um, but hopefully they will be... Um, I'll have the names popping up across the bottom of the screen here as well. Um, <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to drink the coffee before it gets cold. I'm not a type of person who can drink too much coffee when it's cold. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll have the names popping up across the bottom here. Um, she really, really like them. Um, I think what I need to start doing is just crocheting them when I want to and then just stashing them away um, for when we have gifting gifting opportunities, I guess, is the best way to put it. Um, I think, honestly, I just need to get started on next year's Christmas stuff now because um, I just... <laughs> it was so much... I was up very late finishing my final gifts, um, which actually were a pair of cozy house slippers, I believe. Oh, it's the one everyone's made where it's like garter stitch at the back and then like a tube <laughs> for the foot. Um, I made a couple of pairs out of that, out of um, some lopi I had in my stash for my brothers. Um, and I was up till 4 a.m. on Christmas Eve trying to finish the last one because I didn't think I was going to knit Christmas gifts and then magically I did. Um, luckily, the recipients loved them. My brothers were huge fans of of them, and I'm getting multiple Snapchats from them of them being like, ooh, cozy. Yes, it's perfect. Cozy feet. 
um, which is great. Um, I did a bit of impromptu color work on them because I wasn't able, I was trying to work from stash and I wasn't able to get a whole slipper or a whole pair of slippers out of one pair or one ball. So what I did is I, um, I, th I split my ball of Lopi in half, um, knit until I was mainly through, like th once I was through the garter stitch section, I believe it was nine rows into the foot. Um, and then I did like every other stitch kind of pixelated color work to transition in the other color. Um, for the black and green pair I did for my brother, um, the charcoal heathery black that's at the back is, um, is lopy and then the green is a lopy. Um, on the toe, I ran out of green, or not green, I ran out of black <laughs> um, to do the rest of the foot. So when I went to go do the transition part, I um, used Briggs and Little Tuffy and held it with the green that was lopy, so it would still have the same sort of like heathered halo sort of effect um, and transitioned that in. So yeah, so those, those went over really well. I'm um, trying to think of other, the rye socks I knit for my father-in-law also went over really well. Um, both him and his wife will probably be getting uh, worsted weight cozy slipper socks for Christmas next year, um, which I can probably work from stash, which will be super easy and fast and a thing I like to make. So yeah, um, those went over well. Um, once Christmas was finished, um, I think once Christmas was finished, I really need show notes. <laughs> Um, I did manage to finish um, a final pair of Christmas socks for me, which are these guys here, which you will have seen on Instagram. Um, they are the Regia season, seasonal colorways, like rip. they're the Regia seasonal line um, in the tan and bomb colorway. Um, I just did an OMG heel. Um, in a Regia, Regia, it's the Regia Baby, the little 25 gram ones, but anyhow, just a red contrast heel because I didn't want to mess up the striping because I thought it was a really cool and unusual striping pattern. Um, I technically finished these in 2018, so these are my first finished pair of socks for 2018. Um, so they didn't quite make it into my box of socks, but what I think I'm going to do um, is, because I was able to take all my socks from my box of socks and finally put them into my drawer. Um, and I really like the fact that I had 12 brand new pairs of socks that hadn't been worn. I think all the socks I finished in 2018, I'm going to take them and I'm going to put them in a box or I'm going to go, I'm going to put them in a, the basket that my other socks were kept in from 2017. And I think I'm just going to try and keep them as pristine as I can. Um, and then in 2019, which is a terrifying thought, I'll have 12 new pairs of socks, which I think will be really, really cool. It was really nice and novel to be able to have 12 new pairs of socks because I also had forgotten which socks I knitted at the beginning of the year. And I thought that was really, um, I thought it was really fun, um, which it could have just been me, but I thought it was really fun. Um, yeah, the Christmas, this, cause they're a Christmas pair. I'll probably put in the basket anyway. Um, <laughs> eat, and then once December comes around and I pull out my Christmas box of socks, which is currently living above my head, um, they'll go in there with the other Christmas socks. Um, well, yeah, well, I guess I'll figure out what I'm going to do. Um, but yeah, so that's my first faux of 2018. So I just popped over to grab my empty basket um, then I will keep my box of socks in. I have like a bar of soap in here because it makes them smell nice. Um, but it's just like one of the baskets from Ikea. It's not anything fancy. Um, and I just like leave it out on my desk so I can look at it. And it's also where I have my little Dobby, the house elf with his one little sad sock. He's the guardian of my, my pairs of socks. Um, he's, I searched for such a long time to be able to find the Dobby, the house elf pop figure after I saw it on Amber the Yarn Hoarder's podcast. Um, and I think I wasn't able to find one in real life until I was on vacation in Boston in October. And I found him weirdly in like this comic book shop in this random mall. So <laughs> he's my little imported 
house elf. Um, he's also, I find, much cuter in pop, pop form than in the movies and things. You know, so that do take these guys and put them in there. Um, I was trying to think about what other foes I have, but I think foe-wise, that's it. Just so I can address it. Ugh. Um. I know I had been crocheting this giant blanket for my dad for Christmas, and I had been hoping to get it done for him for Christmas, which didn't obviously end up happening because I'm now talking about it in my um, my whip section. <laughs> but I did wrap it up in the form it was in and hand it off to my dad so he knew it was coming. Um, so I'm going to try and have it done as soon as I can for multiple reasons um, because I realized I have six whips or six blanket whips at the moment um, which is too many it's too many blanket whips um, but I was able to crochet on it for a bit around Christmas um, so I got this big rainbow section done uh, and then I'm into this kind of gray and blue, which is becoming white and blue. Um, and this is going to keep going forever and ever. Um, I have assembled all of the yarn that I need for it um, into this giant bag that I made for myself at some point. Um, it's a giant box bag, which honestly isn't super practical. <laughs> because box bags generally are better if they're nice and small. Um, and I've got all my yarns in here. It's mainly worsted weight. I've decided that in order to get some more like super bulky out of my stash, I'm gonna take like single strands of bulkier yarns um, and just crochet them in, in like random chunks when like the yarn runs out. So it'll be like a solid section and then like more marl, um, just so I can get the stuff out of my stash. Like I have, this is like country loom that I have left over, some cozy wool from when I worked at Michael's. Um, the Burnett Roving from my giant grandpa cardigan, um, that I made last year. Just like lots of stuff. And the whole point is I kind of just want to like eat it all up and get out of my stash. Um, it was also gifted some yarn to possibly put in here, but I don't know whether or not, um, ooh, whether or not it'll end up making it. Oh, the other things I have worked on... Sorry, I have them on the floor, which is why I'm looking down here. Um, so in, um, in well, newish tradition, I guess, um, the past couple of years I've participated in the, um, the Christmas Eve cast on that was um, thought of by Little Bobbins, which I think is a really cool idea. So on Christmas Eve, you cast on a project for yourself. Um, she had her, or initially it's supposed to be like a pair of socks, but I've always thought that if you wanted to cast on something else, you totally could. Um, I, being a sock addict, whose yarn is all tangled now, um, <laughs> being a sock addict, I cast on a pair of socks. Um, I do this every year, even though uh, I really honestly shouldn't have cast on a new pair of socks because I had my Tannenbaum socks on the needles already and I had another pair of socks that I had to cast on, which has now been cast on. Um, but, um, cast them on anyway. So these guys here, these are my Christmas Eve cast on. This is the 12 Days of Christmas by Berry Colorful Yarnings, which I didn't realize until after I cut, cast these on that she's not dying anymore, unfortunately. She's, she's done dying. Um, so I don't know this isn't going to be a color that's available, unfortunately, but it was one that I won in the, um, the pigskin party a couple of years ago, which I'm actually not participating in this year, mainly just because I missed the boat and now we're like halfway through. Um, but yeah, so that's, it's the 12, 12 days of Christmas. Um, so I thought it was appropriate to cast on, although today I think is technically the 12th day of Christmas. Um, and these are definitely nowhere close to being done. I haven't even cast on the second one. I have empty sock needles and, empty, and yarn that's not attached. Um, 
but I did split my ball in half and they will start around the same place. Um, I took a look at a picture and I think that each color is supposed to represent a different day. This one is clearly five golden rings. Um, I think it's four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and then there's supposed to be like a greenish stripe for the pear tree. Um, if I can find the picture of like all 12 stripes, I'll pop it in. Um, but I think it's really cool. Um, I think I'm going to do an afterthought heel on these, possibly a black one. Um, I'm not sure. I just don't want to inter interrupt like the 12 continuous stripes. Um, but we'll see if anyone has any good ideas for what color the heel should be. That's what the rest of it will look like. Actually, that's better. So ideas. I don't want to do white, but like white or gray or black. Hmm. You know, actually bright yellow heels could also be fine because then they could be five golden rings heels, which is always the funnest part of that song. <laughs> um, okay, so that's those. So I was also sent, um, I was talking about the cast on that I needed to get on my needles. Um, I was contacted by um, Wool and the Gang a couple of weeks ago, well, a couple of weeks, like a month or so now. Um, to test out their kind of magic socks, which are yarn, which is yarn that they partnered up with Regia to design. Um, that is supposed to, with the right gauge um, and the right stitch count, is supposed to knit up into leopard print type socks, um, which you can kind of see here. Ooh, loud. So that's them there. Um, they shipped me a kit to test out, um, and I've only unfortunately just cast it on um, the other day because life has been crazy. I wanted to have one of these done so I could tell you my opinions on them, but I haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, but it comes in this really fun giant bag, um, and they have instructions on how to do it, and they also... S Ooh. Oh, there's so much crank like in this episode. Oop. They also send you multiple sets of double points so you can try and get the right gauge. Um, as you all know, I am not a DPN fan. They're really nice. They're just good bamboo DPNs, but they have like wool in the gang on them, which I think is really cool. Yeah. They're a good length, good size DPNs. Just have around. Um, yeah, I've just cast mine on. Um, I am going off off their pattern. <laughs> Let's put the right gauge and the right stitch count. You'll be able to get leopard print socks. Um, except for me, who is doing like possibly the wrong gauge and possibly the wrong stitch count. Um, so the sock is designed for 60. It's a 60 stitch sock. Um, but when what ended up happening is I there was a mix up or a miscommunication. So I was sent the wrong color um, and it's this like baby blue and baby pink kind of color combo which is fun but it's just like not not my thing um, so I've decided I'm gonna knit them up as a gift um, for a friend for her birthday so I'm just being proactive about a birthday gift um, so I've cast on the ribbing but her socks I knit at a 72 stitch gauge um, and this is designed for a 60 stitch gauge. Um, it's also designed for a looser gauge for socks, which is something I have feelings about. Um, my sock gauge is around eight and a half to nine stitches per inch. This one is designed for a much looser gauge. Um, but from my experience, if you knit socks, they need to be done at a tighter gauge in order to allow for longer wear. So, I'm gonna at least see if I can get it, get the striping to work. Um, if I can at least get the striping to work um, with a different gauge, but at a larger stitch count. Um, so we will see. Um, and I have my fun little, boop, little cake on there. Um, that is from Bunny and Toot. Um, that was a prize I won from the My Two Tips podcast, but I love it, it looks so tasty. I think it matches matches the sock. Um, but yeah, so that's that. Um, the difference is between like this and the perfect socks is that the perfect socks you have yarn built in to knit your heel. These are designed with an afterthought heel, which I think is an interesting choice. 
Um, and they have a significantly shorter leg. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, it's a really cool idea, but I just don't know how I feel about it yet because I'm not, um, not far enough into it, obviously. I'm just in ribbing and honestly at this point in any sock, I'm like not excited. Um, <laughs> so um, verdict's still out on this. Bare minimum, I think they'll just kind of be fun socks, but uh, it'll be interesting to see whether or not I can get the, the leopard print to leopard print um, with a larger stitch count and a tighter gauge. So we will see. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, they do have some really fun colorways though um, in this and they are also, I think they are doing, they're doing a knit along. The dates I'm unsure of, but I will have them down below here if you did want to participate um, in the knit along and it's some Lisa Frank inspired socks. Yay. Coffee's getting cold. Okay, so my final whip, all my whips <laughs> that I'm currently working on are fingering wake weight, which is great for stash busting, not so great for rapid progress. So you remember this guy I finished, the I Heart Rainbow sweater. Um, I finally, so I had cast on its partner sweater last time, um, and I finished up the body the other day, which is great. I can't actually see, you can see the color work. But so this is the body all done. The hem's flipping up because it's a garter stitch hem before blocking those always kind of, um, flip up. So this is, like I said, this is the I Heart Rainbow sweater by Tin Can Knits. Um, the color work, oop, color work is done um, in Knit Picks Chroma in the superhero colorway. Um, it is the same ball as the red one. It's just a different, um, different section of the ball. And I still have, I think like 50 grams left over. So if I did want to make matching hats, I totally could. Um, I don't know if I will. Um, because I kind of want a bit of the yarn in my blanket to remember making these sweaters for these tiny humans. Um, we'll see. I finished, yeah, so I finished the body. <laughs> Next time, show notes. Show notes are important. Um, but I've picked up for the sleeve, um, and I've been working down on that. I've been trying to work on my whips more monogamously so I can try and make some progress, because um, I went through and made a giant list of all my whips. <laughs> and, uh, um, way too many. Um, I used to be the type of person who would only have three whips going at any point in time. I now have way more than that. I have more than that in just scrappy blankets, which is ridiculous. Um, but my goal, <laughs> my goal for the year, well, I have a couple of different knitting goals. Um, a couple of different knitting goals. So what I'm hoping to do is get down to just two scrappy blankets. Um, yeah, two scrappy blankets and three whips by like December, which I think is possible. Um, I have a lot of like obligation knitting I have to do. Um, I have sweaters I have to make for babies, which is great and super fun and great for stash busting. I have some hats I need to make. Um, and then I can focus on my whips, which will be great. Um, thought it would be fun to pull over my giant whip basket and just quickly go through them, I guess. Um, normally this time of year I would go through like my knitting statistics and how many of X thing I knit last year, but I don't have show notes. I haven't put that together yet. So I'm going to quickly do this. Um, I will timestamp it if no one cares, um, <laughs> or if you're not interested, but I thought publicly whip shaming myself would be a great way to maybe motivate myself to finish up some stuff. Um, so in my knit Thulu bag, is doo, 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 my Agatha cardigan, which smells so good. So I'm knitting this out of Peace Fleece. Um, Peace Fleece, I think this is the Father Rabbit colorway. Do I have a ball band? I do. Look at me. Yeah, Peace Fleece, Rabbit Gray, my bad. It's the Rabbit Gray colorway. And this, um, this Peace Fleece is a uh, it's a 80% wool, 20% mohair blend. Um, so this is the Agatha cardigan, which is 
super close to being done. I have one sleeve and then I just have to finish my other sleeve. So close. I think it just got put down because I had other things to do, but I need to finish this guy. I need a gray cardigan in my life, in my wardrobe. Um, so that's whip number one. Um, I do, well actually I guess that's whip number, what is it, one, two, three, four. This is four. <laughs> um, number five is a uh, sample knit that I'm doing that I cannot show you. Um, but I want to get that done. Um, number six is, I feel like I'm missing some. I think on my list there was more. Maybe it was just blankets. I don't know. <laughs> six? Six? Yes. Um, six is my reunion cushion covers that I was making for my friend that I was trying to have done when I saw her in October. Um, so this cushion cover, this is one of two. Um, they're half of a Union Jack, um, so when you put them together on your couch, they like, that's why they're called reunions, because you reunite the flag. Um, so this particular half of the cushion cover has traveled all the way to Boston and has come all the way back to Vancouver uh, because we couldn't find a cushion that would fit inside it properly. So once the other one is done, I'm going to take them to Ikea and buy proper cushion covers. For them, I'm knitting it out of Briggs and Little Heritage in the seafoam color. Because um, the person that I was knitting these for, the reason she's getting Union Jack pillows, her family's originally from the UK um, and she went to school in Halifax. Um, so the yarn is from the East Coast. This symbolizes like her. Like, so my camera cut me off because I was rambling about my whips. Um, but the last whip I had in my whip pile of shame, um, besides my reunion cushions, and I'm not quite sure where it cut me off on that one, is my skirt in the round, um, that has been on the needle since far too long ago. Uh, yeah, so my last whip is my skirt in the round, um, by Sylvia Olson. Um, she's a, um, BC, I was going to say Vancouver, BC based designer. I think she works on the island specifically. Um, and she designs patterns inspired by cowichan knitting and different cowichan patterns. Um, sorry, I guess Coast Salish people, not just specifically cowichan people. Um, use of the terms is more complicated and needs more info than I have at the moment. Um, but she... She designed the skirt um, that has color work that's inspired by um, Coast Salish sweaters. Um, and I have been working on this for far too long. Um, I initially wanted to knit the color work of the skirt using the, um, the traditional Coast Salish way of knitting color work, which is kind of more elastic and it's a really cool way of doing color work, um, but I just wasn't enjoying it. So <laughs> I, um, I ripped out Oh no, I didn't even rip it out. I thought I'd ripped it out. <laughs> so long this has been on the needles. So the cool thing is about um, the way of knitting color work traditionally for like couch and sweaters is you get this kind of cool pebbly effect, which leads to like a stretchier, a stretchier form of color work. Um, I apparently only ripped back to this part of the um, knitting. Um, and then went back and did two-handed Fair Isle color work for the rest of it. Um, which, I wonder if I can demonstrate this, isn't, oh, it's not too bad, but it's like not as stretchy as the other one. Um, but, so I initially wanted to knit the whole thing, um, with the Coast Salish traditional way of knitting color work, and I just couldn't do it. It wasn't, just wasn't my, my favorite way to knit, and knitting is about enjoying the process. Um, so went back, ripped it out, finished the color work, and this skirt has just been sitting at this point for a really long time. It doesn't even have needles on it anymore, but I'm just five decreases away, which is what that jingling is, five little clippy stitch marker decreases away, because I mark them as I go so I know how far I am. Um, five decreases away and then a waistband. So that would also be nice if I got that done while it was still cold. 
Um, so that's whip seven. Um, and I think maybe with my blankets it was a lot more because I have the scrappy blanket for my dad, which is eight. Um, yeah, scrappy blanket for my dad, which is eight. Um, giant blanket that I talked about before. Uh, my hexagon blanket, my coziest memories blanket, and I'm just at the seaming part on a granny square blanket that I was crocheting for charity. So that's 11 whips, including blankets. I feel like I'm missing something though. That's weird. But yeah, it's too many. So the goal is to get those all wrapped up and only have two, two whips left. Or like two blanket whips and like two or three other whips. I'd like to get it down to like a sock and a sweater. Um, or like a sock and another accessory by the end of the year. Um, but yeah, so there's that. Um, before, actually, do do do. So I did have one, I had, I did a bit of sewing for Christmas. <laughs> did a bit of sewing for Christmas. Um, I sewed up a pair of pajama pants for my friend and a like tacky Hawaiian shirt, which I talked about, I think last time um, in my sewing section. Um, those have been gifted and went over very, very well. Um, I will hopefully put in a picture here. Um, so yeah, the, um, the recipient of the tacky Hawaiian shirt is going on vacation and he's saying he's going to take his whole collection and be like that tacky weird guy on vacation, which I think is really funny. Um, like I said before, the pants were self-drafted and then the, um, the shirt is a pattern slash tutorial from a blog called Melly Sews. Um, and I just, the recipient's a little bit smaller, so I just kind of did bigger seam allowances and that kind of shrunk it in just the right amount. I did originally do a muslin just to make sure that it would fit him properly. Um, and that worked. So I just kind of moved forward with it. Um, I also <laughs> finished, um, my Christmas dachshund skirt, which I love so much. And I'm kind of sad that I have to like put away until next year. Um, but it's just my, my regular kind of self-drafted um, gathered skirt pattern um, with pockets. Got my pockets um, that I attach into the waistband here. So they kind of sit near the front. Um, this was a huge hit at Christmas. I got so many compliments on it. Um, and it was really nice to just kind of have a fun, fun little dachshund skirt for, <laughs> for all the family events on Christmas. Which I thought was great. Um, so that's just my quick little sewing. Um, hopefully I'll be able to do a bit more sewing in this whip cracking um, situation time. I don't know. Um, we'll see. I'm trying to go forward with my word balance for the year, but it's just been I'm working on getting like the fitness balance in and then also finding time for crafting. I've learned magically that if you like wake up early in the morning, that's where all the time is. Sorry got interrupted and now I have lost a large portion of my natural light. So hopefully I'll be able to fix this. Um, so I just, the last thing I have before, um, I say goodbye for the week is our, the cow that I was hinting at last week, lighting from the dark. <laughs> um, so, uh, Glenda of wet coast wools and I are teaming up to do a sock yarn stash, uh, cow. So it's going to go from Monday um, to May, I believe it was. It was going to be a five month cowl. Um, so what, so I'm reading off my phone so I can get, um, get all the info right. So what we're going to do is between the Wet Coast Wools group and the Coffee and Craft podcast group, we're going to split up the chatter thread and the finished objects thread. Um, the finished objects thread is going to be in my group and the chatter thread is going to be over in Glenda's group. Um, all the rules I'm going to put in, I'm going to put them in the thread as well so you can see them. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do like a yardage base kind of system. Um, so for any project made with fingering weight yarn, um, that is 400 yards or less, you get one entry. Um, you get two entries for it being 800 yards or more, or 800 yards, like anywhere between 400 and 800, I guess. <laughs> and then you get three entries if it's a thousand yards or more. So essentially it's like one, two or three skeins of fingering weight yarn. It doesn't have to be sock yarn, can be, 
just like a fingering weight yarn. Um, and you get a bonus entry if your yarn is from 2017 or older, just to kind of encourage people to knit from stash. Because I am currently cold sheeping um, and trying to knit from stash and encouraging other people to do so would be great. Um, yeah, but if you don't have a stash, I don't want to exclude you. Um, do, do, do. Cool. Um, so it's going to be the hashtag SSS cow. So it's the sock spring sock yarn stash down is what we're calling it. But again, if you don't have stash, you can also participate. It's fine. <laughs> and we are not including um, blanket squares. Uh, I'm going to kind of go with stash dash rules on this where you can't um, like if you finish the whole blanket, you can count it, but like not individual squares. Um, you can also include whips um, if you want, just like not a bind off, like 50% done or less, I guess. Not more. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is, I think, um, all of the info for that. Um, I will hopefully have more... I think that's all the info. Ooh, I didn't want to do a year-long cal because I'm thinking by the time that one ends, I'm gonna like maybe switch up from using fingering weight. Um, and hopefully by the time that ends, I'm thinking I might do like a get started early on Christmas gifts type thing. Um, and just because we have that one going doesn't mean we can't do other ones. Um, but I thought that'd be a good thing to do because as I stated last time, I have too much sock yarn. This is mainly sock yarn. This is mainly sock yarn. Um, I also did a pull all my stuff out and I realized that I have um, a lot of fingering weight sweater quantities. So also those can be used. Yeah, you can knit anything you want as long as it's fingering weight. It can be baby sweaters. It could be normal size sweaters. It can be socks, it can be hats. Um, Tin Can Knits just came up with their Barley Light, um, which I want to knit one of uh, this that skein's gonna be barley light. I don't even know if you guys can see that because it's too dark now. Uh, that's gonna be a barley light. There's a couple of other barley lights that are lurking in there. Um, but yeah, so let's get knitting our, our fingering weight yarn for yourself, for others, for whatever. Let's just get, get some yarn knit. Um, so now that I've lost all my natural light, um, <laughs> I will see all of you guys next week because next week, same time, same place, I'm going to have my sock extravaganza episode where I talk about different sock heels and different sock yarns and like do a breakdown on yarns. Um, I'm going to try and have more of this guy knit so we can see whether or not the sock experiment worked. Um, and we'll go from there. Maybe I'll break down my box of socks as well. If anyone has any interest in seeing um, my box of socks, but I think it showed it on Instagram and I don't know if that's actually interesting. Um, but yeah, I was going to go over different heels, different sock yarns, um, different fit, like how I get my socks to fit, um, all that sort of stuff. Um, so if there's anything besides those things that you wanted to see, um, feel free to leave a comment, let me know. Um, if not, I will see you next week for the sock extravaganza. <laughs> Have a good week, everybody, and happy knitting. Bye.